I think Castlevania II Simon's Quest for the NES is an awesome game, but it's also one that plenty of people have dismissed over the years due to how it changed from the original Castlevania game and how vague it was. It was no longer a linear game with stage progression. You could explore and level up, had RPG elements. This is an important game for the franchise's future for sure, and a lot of these changes were kind of cool at the time, but there was little direction. The NPCs in the game gave hints as to what you needed and where to go, but often it seemed like you were being lied to or tricked. The translation for NPC dialogue was a bit bad at times, making you wonder what the hell these guys are talking about, contradicting one another, casting doubt on what to do or what to buy and where to go. It wasn't a bad game, just the NPCs should have had more care taken in what they say, but this wasn't just an English problem. Even in the original Japanese version, a lot of the NPCs would tell you odd things that made little sense and would cause you to get confused. So sure, there are some mistranslations in the English version, but a lot of them were fairly close to the original's intent, which just made it more confusing and the game more difficult than it needed to be. Now, beyond having little direction, another complaint was there was no in-game map. It's easy to lose track of where you're going and where you've been, but also another big thing was hearts. This was a bit annoying. They weren't just for ammo. They were also currency and experience points. So while I think Simon's Quest is a good game with some annoying quirks, I think it's a game that would benefit greatly from a remake. And if Konami doesn't want to do it, someone else will. And they have. It's disappointing that it almost seems like Konami has forgotten about the Castlevania franchise when it comes to video games. We haven't gotten a new mainline game since 2014. There was only the re-releases of old games and then the free-to-play Grimoire of Souls since Lord of Shadows 2 released. So the fans gotta pick up the slack, right? And that's where we're at today. So Castlevania Chronicles 2 Simon's Quest for the PC from War Machine Studios just released. And man, is this an awesome game. I'm not usually big on fan remakes or fan games in general, but sometimes these guys really do nail it, and I think they did so here. So if you're familiar with Simon's Quest on the NES, you'll get the gist of things here fairly quick. Now while both games share similarities, this remake has changed some things for the better. Now the NPCs in the game offer more useful dialogue to help you figure things out. And we also now have a basic map to keep track of where we are going. There are quite a few changes here, but I think one of the most welcome changes is currency, the hearts. You still have the hearts, but now enemies drop gold. You use that to buy items instead of hearts. Now hearts are just ammo. It appears hearts don't double as experience points here either, as I noticed whenever I obtained a piece of Dracula, my health was increased. And that's another cool thing. Each of the mansions where you obtain a piece of Dracula has its own unique boss, and the stage is an entirely new area from the original NES game. We also get a slide move that helps us evade enemies and bosses so you don't easily get trapped and juggled to death. Also, a couple new sub-weapons were added, and this is pretty big, the ability to quickly swap between them with the LB and RB buttons instead of having to select them from the pause menu. This helps a lot as you don't have to get out of the action to swap items. Just do it on the fly. Now, another welcome change is that you can now save your progress. No passwords needed here. Anytime you go to a church or find a statue that restores health, once you restore your health, your game has been saved. And also within these churches, if there's a priest there, he will sell you max hearts if you have enough money for it. I never really found that useful as hearts seemed plentiful while I played, but it's there if you need to use it. So I'm really digging this game and I think the developer did an excellent job of recreating the experience of the original Simon's Quest game, but adding in enough new stuff and changes to make it unique and worth playing. It's really good in my opinion, but I did have a couple small issues I want to quickly bring up that perhaps could be fixed in future versions. The only game-breaking thing I found so far which I was able to replicate multiple times is when you speak to an NPC that offers to sell you something. If they are near an area you could walk up, like a staircase, if you're going up the stairs and that NPC overlaps your character, you could wind up getting stuck by pressing up as it'll open the dialogue box to, with the option to buy an item, but as you've moved away from the NPC, it doesn't allow you to exit the dialogue. Uh, kind of getting you stuck in a way, I guess. 
It's easy to avoid, but also maybe an issue with having to use up to initiate dialogue instead of a face button like the original game. The only other problem I noticed was occasionally my controller would have the button configuration backwards, swapping the X and the A button on an Xbox controller. Now I'm not really sure if that was a game issue or possibly a driver issue or just something random with my PC, but it happened a few times to me and I've not had this happen in any other games I've been playing on my PC lately. So yeah, if it happens to you, I, I don't know. Now besides those things, I didn't really have any other issues while playing and figure maybe those are things that could be fixed. Maybe that controller thing was just my problem. Maybe just a fluke during my playtime type of thing. Uh, but it's still a very solid and polished experience. The changes to the game are mostly to fix things from the original NES version, but also to expand on that original's experience, and it's a blast. My heart was pounding playing this game. I really dug it. Now, there is only one major change that I found that I think some people may be mixed on, and that's how the game has some barriers forcing you not to be able to explore as much as you could in the original. Maybe this keeps things more tight and doesn't allow you to wander off too much, uh, but some areas will be locked with a statue blocking the way until you obtain a specific piece of Dracula. Maybe this was done to help people stay on course, maybe it was done to not allow the game to be broken, but either way it didn't really bother me but I figured it was worth mentioning. So there you go, a new Castlevania game, well I mean based on an older Castlevania game, but from fans for fans, free to grab and play on your PC. This is something I, I think is cool when people do these types of things, but can be risky as well. So if you're interested, I definitely recommend downloading it sooner than later. This game is freaking awesome. I'm really digging playing it. If this was something that Konami put out there and said, hey, we're charging you know some money for it, I'd be like, sign me up. I'm down. I'll play. I want to, you know, I'll bite. It looks sweet, you know, and it's a shame that Konami's just not doing too much. I know we have the Dead Cells DLC coming up, but as far as the mainline Castlevania game, what the hell is going on out there? It, you know, you've had the Netflix show, and that seemed pretty popular. Uh, Castlevania is something that's on a lot of people's minds, and people are still interested in playing, so why aren't we getting new games? So, like I said earlier, it seems like the fans gotta, you know, pick up the slack type of thing, and I'm all for it. Screw it. If Konami's not going to do it, somebody else will, and I'll be there to play it. Appreciate you guys watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye.